Hey, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to talk about the three key differences that separate senior developers from junior developers. If you're a junior developer wondering what it takes to become a senior developer or what these senior developers do better than junior developers, you're going to find out by the end of this video. And if you stick around until the end, you'll also learn why companies prefer senior developers even though they are a lot more expensive and what you can do about it. As you already know, senior developers have been around the block for a lot longer than junior developers, and they do know a thing or two about how to get things done. But that's a non-actionable generalization of what it means to be a senior developer, so let's dive deeper and look at the things that make the difference. The first difference we're going to look at is anticipation, which comes from experience. Just like with any other job, doing it for a long time makes the job more predictable than if you were to do it for the first few times. Simply by doing the same thing over and over again, senior developers can see a few steps ahead and they can anticipate problems and completely avoid them. This saves time, which would otherwise be wasted by either fixing the problem or trying out different solutions. To give you an example, back in 2010, I think it was, I was working on a large Rails application where we used different images for icons and buttons and whatnot. So that created a problem because we needed to fetch those images and with each new request, the entire page would feel less and less responsive, not just because of the size of the images, but because each new request would incur additional overhead even if just for a few milliseconds. And they would quickly add up. A solution for making fewer requests already existed in the form of CSS sprites, but I didn't know about it until the problem revealed itself and made me look for a solution. A CSS sprite is basically one big image that contains a lot of other small images like icons and buttons and whatnot. And instead of loading each image separately, you'd load this one big image and then with CSS you can show just parts of the image and you'd show different parts for different DOM nodes. It sounds like a hack, but at the time it was good enough and it made the site feel more responsive, so problem solved. But my point is, if you're new to the game, you don't know these tricks, and it takes longer when you create the problem and then you fix it instead of skipping it altogether. And there are multiple kinds of problems that you can anticipate and avoid if you have enough experience. And by doing so, you're not just saving time, but you're also improving customer satisfaction for the company, which translates to more money in the bank. I hope you can see how this distinction alone can make you a valuable asset to your employer, but it doesn't stop there. Confidence is another one, and it comes from testing. You might think that confidence is something that benefits the developer alone, but it goes both ways. A confident developer can not only choose the right solution and save time, but he or she can also write code in a manner that is beneficial to the entire team even after he or she no longer works there. What I mean by that is there's good code and there's bad code. My first ever Rails upgrade took our team three long months because back then we weren't experienced enough to know what good Rails code looks like. We didn't know that if you were serious about building Rails applications, you need to have proper testing in place. And when the upgrade day came knocking, we scrambled to fix all the bugs as fast as we could. But it was already too late. Bad code is brittle and hard to change. We'll talk about the latter in the next point, but for now, let's focus on the former. You can gauge the quality of your code base and its brittleness by how confident you feel about changing it. Brittle code breaks for unexpected reasons, like when you build a new feature, ship it, only to find out at 2 a.m. in the morning that the code you wrote broke a totally different and unexpected part of the application. If you want to get confident and build high-quality Rails apps, get good at Rails, and more importantly, make sure you properly test your code. And if you want to skip ahead a few steps, check out my Rails course and my ebook in the description. You'll save a few years of trial and error, and you'll sleep much better at night, I guarantee. Confidence is about knowing no matter what you change, you'll never break anything, and is just as valuable, if not more, than anticipation. Which brings me to the latter characteristic of brittle code, and that is code that's hard to change because it wasn't designed very well to start with. You'll recognize it when you see your team being afraid of touching some part of the code base. 
it's either a part that's not tested well, or it's so entangled with the rest of the application that it feels like changing anything requires changing everything. Another sign of bad code design could be huge pull requests. So when you need to make a seemingly small change, but you have to touch a lot of files, that's often an indicator of bad code design because Good co-design allows you to decouple the different parts of your code base from one another and tries to make them more atomic. So when changes are required, there's less of a surface area to touch, which means changing fewer files, decreasing the likelihood of introducing new bugs, and being able to build more features faster. If you've never thought about it through these lens of the business owner, I hope you can see now that everything boils down to speed and efficiency. That's where the value to the business comes from. And that's what determines your value based on your skill set. So a developer that has that skill set is more valuable to the company than one that doesn't. It's not about just can you build X, it's more than that. A senior developer can anticipate and avoid problems and thus save time. He or she can write bug-free code and thus increase the customer satisfaction and he or she can design the code in a way that's easy to change and thus make it easier for the business to adapt to market changes. And these are the reasons most companies prefer to hire senior developers rather than juniors. It's because the senior developer can deliver more value. And even though they might seem more expensive on the outside, if you take into consideration all the factors I've mentioned, you can see how that's a false assumption. Because buggy applications and customers leaving or not being able to adapt to market changes fast enough in the context of a multi-million dollar application can cost way more than you would pay for a dozen senior developers. So if you're a junior developer now and you want to get to senior as fast as possible so you can start earning more, here's what you can do about it. If you don't have a job yet, start working for free. You can contribute to open source projects, you can build personal projects, whatever it takes to build up your skill set and experience. Start networking with other developers so they can see what you're capable of and can recommend you to their employer. You have a lot more chances of getting a job through a recommendation than you have by going through recruiters. Work for cheap on sites like Upwork so you can build some real life projects and put anything that's relevant on your LinkedIn profile. I hope this helps and see you next time. Bye.